Hello, and welcome back to some more Hidarashi. Um, I think that's more annoying than the rain. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be back. Um, but actually, I don't know, they're both really annoying. I wanna talk. Maybe we go into tips and I'll be quiet for a second. So I'll do this, and it's not a start. I need, I need to do introductory stuff. <laughs> okay. I think this is actually a mimic of Anatakushi, as per usual. But yeah, welcome back to um, Hidarashi. Happy to be back. Um, just got back from my vacation a couple days ago, so just getting back into the groove of it. Um, if you didn't know, I was in Vancouver for the week, um... It was fun. I I live in Canada, so it's not like I was going to a different country, but I didn't. I haven't really ventured out of my province, so it was a good experience. Very very pretty. Probably, I mean, I have again. I haven't really seen all of Canada, but I'd imagine it's probably the best looking province with the. Especially the scenery, I mean, because wherever you are, you basically see mountains everywhere. So that's pretty good. Um, so I would, obviously, I would recommend it if you're going to Canada. Especially if you like, um, well, there's a lot of activity stuff if you're fit. I'm not really fit, so I'm struggling, but yeah, lots of fun physical activity stuff. And obviously, it's famous for... It's downhill winter sports stuff since again it's filled with mountains so if you're into that kind of stuff would recommend it was a good experience overall um also i didn't notice that the last video i actually posted it on my birthday um i knew that my birthday was coming i just didn't realize i posted it on it so yay happy birthday me i guess at the old age of 22. I mean, we're getting there. Chano's been, is newly a year old now from January and I'm now 22. So, I mean, time's passing. Um, and yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> Hopefully the good times will keep on rolling. Also, um, this might be a shorter video because I'm actually recording at like 1 a.m. I usually record in the afternoon, so I probably won't do an Aralon video, just just a bit, get a bit into, I don't know, I said that before and it's happened to be an hour, but I'm not planning to, um, I usually don't record this late, I usually do it in the afternoons, but nighttime is a good time to record, I guess, since it's pretty quiet, though I'm trying not to yell, <laughs> um, I mean, I used to record at night, but I think that was during Sano Utah, but I recorded at night for different reasons, so. <laughs> Anyways, let's get back into it, um, after that three-minute introduction. <laughs> so, we just finished chapter 10, I believe, that was, and we're going on to chapter 11. Pretty exciting chapter with Keiji finally killing, we finally get the watch and Adashi stuff. And a pretty surprising conclusion um, with Takano, the interactions with Takano, I wasn't really expecting that. Like, I pretty, I did, did talk about that I did expect that maybe someone wa would watch Keiji in the act, and I thought it would be Uishi or one of the, one of the club members, but I wasn't really expecting Takano. So obviously they're painting her in a, in a light where she's evil, or more specifically, she might have done something to Tomatati, um, which is interesting. It kind of gives a little throwback. I mean, it kind of um foreshadows that the victims of the night, you know, the one dead, one missing, will be Tomatati and um, Tepe, the uncle. I don't know which one will be missing and which one will be murdered. I guess if you just... You can just guess or guesstimate. That's not a word. <laughs> guess whatever. Guesstimate that it... 
um, Tomotaki will be the murder victim and Tepe will be the the missing person just because Tomotaki is always the murder victim usually but yeah that's how they're painting it as um, I mean I was already suspicious of Takano I think most people on their first read throughs sorry <laughs> first read throughs of this probably are she is just a very suspicious character in nature um obviously this could also not be that bad but it's it's pretty glaring it's it's kind of a throwback to um i think i talked about it in anotakushi not so much the not so much watanadashi about the idea that the curse murders like there's a murder victim and the person's missing is actually the person who killed the first victim so like as so like the first one where the manager so the leader of the rebel group would have killed the manager at least planned it out he was the one who went missing and for the fourth one where satoshi presumably killed the ant and then he went missing so it's sort of like that um that was kind of a thread obviously two and three are a lot less um a lot less tight i guess because you don't really have enough information or like an actual like uh, yeah enough information to accuse um the wives i guess of killing the husbands but Again, it's not like you have information to not prove it. So there's that. And obviously that would go well with, um, for in Honor Tatsushi, that would go well with, um, Tomotaki being killed and Takano being the one who, um, killed him and disappeared. I think that you can easily draw the line through that. Um, especially with, like, Tomotaki's shot face. Like, obviously it's alluding to, like, kids doing it. Or the club members, but I think he would be pretty shocked if Takano would kill him. So, and obviously you go to watch an Adashi and it's like, well, well, Takano is found dead too. But I, 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 the way I've explained it is, um, that, um, that it's more of an outlier situation because if there is a group pulling the strings, Mion slash Shion or whoever's doing it is kind of creating going off script and doing their own thing which kind of messed with the flow and then there's also the idea that even if the body was found it doesn't necessarily have to be Takano with the main reason being that she's friends slash maybe lovers with Tomotaki who is confirmed by the police in the hints in Anatotlishi that he's using a fake alias so it wouldn't be surprising that like maybe the real um Takano was burned and killed but it wouldn't be surprising if that person was using a fake alias and also someone else uh, gave me the idea that yes she is a nurse at the clinic and if we are um, theorizing that the clinic guys are evil then it wouldn't be a stretch to um, tamper with the evidence with the dead bodies and stuff so there's that too but anyways I think we should move on um nine minute i mean it's not really an i guess it is an intro maybe i will it will be a slightly longer video <laughs> anyways so first hint um i forgot what it was called but i think this there's a very similar hint with a phone call in the anu tatushi when right after the watch and Adashi festival so again anu tatushi and tatora garoshi have been doing a lot of similar things um Obviously trying to make connections to one each other. Going over Watan Gashi. But yeah, let's actually start this. I'll just say, hello, do you need the hospital or the fire department? Eh, <laughs> Well, this is different. Or it could be, uh, 
Was in a talk nose body burnt and found in a barrel in Watanadashi, I think. わかりました。すぐに現場を確認しますので、そちら様のお名前とすぐに連絡のつく電話番号、それから火災現場の詳細な場所をお願いします。消防司令部より通達、G ただちに現場を確認されたし。消防署ですか。こちらはジブロック第3消防分隊です。通報の現場にさっき到着。ドラム缶が1つ、32放棄。ああ、いや。炎上しているのを確認しました。火は鎮火しつつあり、冷
ターゲットを変更したとか。So they were watching the Hojo resident the whole time, but they didn't notice Keiji killing them is also interesting. かなぁ。恨めたなで、北条鉄平の方は何も問題なし。ねえ、夕方頃に娘が祭りに出かけて、So, just the household grounds, they don't actually have a tail on him. So, I think I'm going to go to the house. 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 They wouldn't make Tepe the one in the barrel. That's just awkward. So that would be a mind fuck for Keiichi, I guess. Unless it actually just started on the chapter. Interesting. So we have a confirmation that at least the the till with the throat clawed out is, for air quotes,、uh, Tomotaki Jiro. Anyways, let's see how this goes. Let's see how Keiichi continues to play it off. Let's see. How Satoko reacts to this. I mean, obviously the other club members too, but Satoko's reaction will be interesting. Whether she would be、um, angry with Keiichi or relieved. I mean, I guess she wouldn't be angry at Keiichi, just angry in general, or was she like too far broken to recover? Quits it. <laughs> at first. I thought this was, I thought it was a dream. I was staring at this strange sheet, not really understanding what it was. That was all. I didn't go after it, nor did I ridicule, ridicule it. The fact was that the boring view was the ceiling of my own room, but I didn't realize that for a fairly long time. Yes, I thought that I had been dreaming, but I had actually been staring at the ceiling the whole time. I love the fade from black to color. Very, very nice. Lethargy induced by the voices of the cicadas. Even after I realized I was awake, I couldn't draw forth the energy to sit up. Everything I could see, everything I could hear, everything was like a television broadcast that had already ended. It was hot. So hot I could choke on the heat. My back was moist with night sweats, and it felt gross. Unable to endure it any longer, I tossed in my futon, and finally, blood started cursing, coursing through the, my brain. I lazily recalled the long day I had yesterday. Oh, so. I remember he didn't pick up his first shovel, he didn't go back. So that's not good. I hope he remembers it in the middle of the day and fixes it, but I have a feeling that he doesn't. And somebody finds it. Not necessarily o i s h i If、um, one of the club members finds it, it would also be pretty awkward. The reality. As I lay here listening to the voices of the cicadas, and yesterday so different from it. In order to tell Satoru's uncle, I had rehearsed, formulated a plan, and dug a hole. It was very hot, and I was tired, wasn't I? And when evening came, I went to school and called him out on the phone. I panicked for a moment, and when he asked where the police station was, when he asked where the police station was, but it worked out. And then I awaited him and swooped down. I can't remember any more, any more what sort of emotions I'd let control my body. In any case, it didn't go smoothly, but I did it. It was very hard to dig the hole for the body. That feel of the rain pelting down on me, I don't think I'll ever forget it. The rain, the mud, and the sprays of blood. The sensation of floundering in a swamp. When I met Tatano san on the way home, that wasn't good, no matter how I interpreted it. It was the most misfortune and uncalculated thing that had happened that night. Everything would have been perfect if only I hadn't encountered her. <sighs> I 
I was just riding my bike with my shovel in one hand through the downpour, utterly soaked. There's no way someone could surmise I was a murderer bearing a body just from that information. Now that I was thinking calmly, napping under the morning sun, that's what I thought. Still, the more I think about Takano-san's eyes, it seemed like she understood. Takano-san, she knew that I'd killed someone, buried them, and that I'd been on my way home, exhausted. Takano-san wouldn't gain anything from selling me out to the police, but that didn't mean I could feel at ease. <laughs> I had crossed such a bridge to get my tranquil life back, and I had finally achieved it as a result. But now, for the rest of my life, for all the tranquil days starting today, I'd have to live in fear of when they could suddenly end. I may have twisted my ankle, though from total exhaustion. The fact that I couldn't make the snap judgment I needed to, I regretted it more and more as time went on. I mean, definitely. Killing Takano was the right play, you know, if you put your, your, um, yourself in Keiichi's shoes, um, even if she wasn't evil and that whole evil thing didn't happen, just the fact that, um, someone saw you with a shovel that night probably isn't good, especially since he forgot the evidence. Also, I guess Keiichi wouldn't know this, though, he did have a bit of interaction with her, how sharp Takano-san is, so... She, like, again, even if she wasn't being totally evil in that scene, you can definitely um, guess that she would catch on more than you would expect. You didn't have a choice, Keiichi Maibra. You didn't have any choice at the time. You were tired. You were a mess. Even if you had made the decision, you might not have been able to kill her. She might just have beaten you instead. In that sense, parting ways uneventfully could have been the safer option. No matter how sharp Tatano-san's intuition was, she had no proof. Well, I guess that goes with, um, confirms my idea that Tichi knows she's sharp at least. Her suspecting me didn't amount to evidence by itself. <laughs> Just worry about it when the time comes. Now, isn't the time... Isn't the time to be worrying? It's the time to be smiling, right? You accomplished so much just to gain a new life starting today, didn't you? God, I'm already happy listening to this song. It's so effective. Then you should be happy at this new morning. If, I, if remembering the past is too hard for you, then just consider everything up to yesterday as having never happened. You said so yourself. You'd bury it all like it never happened. Well, your wish came true. Everything before yesterday never happened. So be happy, Keiichi Maibra. Bye. <laughs> I stuck my hands lazily. It felt a little silly for me to be the one doing it. I heaved a sigh from deep in my belly. That sigh got my lungs moving. It felt like I hadn't been breathing until now. It wasn't enough to admonish myself over. All the dice that could have been thrown already had been. And the number that had turned up weren't bad at all. If I lost with those numbers, then I'd just have to give up, I guess. I grabbed the chest of my pajamas and flapped it back and forth. Cool air flowed over my sweating body. Okay. Nothing before yesterday happened. Nothing. Nothing at all. I'd forget it all. Yesterday was all a dream. Uh, it's a shame about the shovel, honestly. I know I said it already, but it's hard. It's hard to ignore. What time was it? Absol about midday? Getting myself up and going to school this late seemed kind of absurd. But I needed to go. I felt like going to school would be the first step into my peaceful new life. I didn't care how late it was. I would go. I'd go to school right now and get back to the life I had retaken as soon as I could. My lazy body immediately became lighter at the, th at the thought. 
I rode up out of the futon, bounced onto my knees, then leaped upright. Also wondering um, what the parents' interactions was that night. Um, especially seeing your son all muddy and stuff. Like if they questioned him or did he like sneak in somehow. But he would have to take a shower. So I'd imagine it'd be hard to sneak in. Maybe we'll see once he leaves his room. <laughs> I rode up out of the futon, bounced onto my knees, and then leaped upright. Jutele! <laughs> Lucy's in a good mood. I stuck out my chest with pride at my gymnast-like pose, then took a deep breath of fresh air. The brisk morning air had been gone for a while, replaced with the crisp air of summer. There we go. Downstairs, I got a stern talking to you by my mother. Where were you last night? When did you get back? You need to tell me when you won't be home for dinner. Things like that. Well, that answers the question that he somehow snuck in and take a, took a bath. I don't think he has a shower, right? Um, interesting. But concerning the importance of what I'd accomplished yesterday, a little scolding was no problem. In fact, it even felt like the sort of thing that would happen in such a peaceful life. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I listened with an irresponsible smile and stepped out into the sun high overhead. It was around the time lunch break would be ending. Everyone would probably be worrying about me. I didn't go to the festival and now I wasn't at school. Quick prediction, Satoko won't be at school. Probably because the police did end up um, visiting her and she might still be under question. Which would definitely put a damper on Keiichi's mood. Well, maybe they weren't too worried about it. Since they would have gotten a small piece of news, but a happy one from Satoko today. Yes, the small piece of news that her uncle hadn't come home last night. Satoko would probably live her days in nervous tension for a while, thinking he still might come home. But eventually those days would end. And finally, Satoko too would realize her uncle was never coming back. And then Rika-chan would quietly invite her. She would say, you can live with me again. And everything would be back to normal. Her lives would go back to how they were before that man appeared. So Toto would start wearing that extraordinary smile, complete with those protruding canines, and fool everyone with those traps she was so proud of. Very, very optimistic. I'd probably be her first target out of everyone, but I wouldn't be mad. In fact, I might actually shed a tear of joy at the return of something so normal. Satoko, she'd gradually grow back into that meddlesome personality of hers. I mean, my lack of useful life skills was already completely exposed. I wondered if I'd ever be a match for Satoko. But that would be such a pleasant thing to see too. And with such warm, fuzzy predictions, I didn't feel bad for going to school so late. In fact, I wanted to run there now to get there as soon as I could. Instead, I decided to savor the peacefulness of just going to school like normal, without running. The world I'd obtained for myself that gave me joy just by walking like this. Yes. The world beginning on this very day was something I had won. Without that mon monumental feat yesterday, I would never have been able to come to school so cheerfully today. The school date came into sight. Just then I heard the principal ringing the bell to mark the end of lunch break. It was a clear, refreshing sound. I stopped despite myself and let myself take it in. Tap. It stopped suddenly, so there was an extra footstep. With the noise, the blessedness I was feeling throughout my whole body withdrew into any port it could find. Oh, this is, uh... I kind of forgot about this, that he had this sort of, um, similar, similar experience from Honor Tachishi, where, you know, he thought someone was behind him, so he, like, spun his bat and broke a shelf or something. He kind of had, like, the same thing where he sent someone behind him, but he didn't see anything. So maybe that will happen more in this. <laughs> but 
With the noise, the blessedness I was feeling throughout my whole body withdrew into any pore it could find. And as if to replace it, I felt like hundreds of hairy caterpillars were climbing up on my feet and in before it's just a club member sneaking up on him or something. I turned back, but of course nobody was there. Okay, never mind. It is another one of those. A single footstep could have easily been my imagination, but the footstep felt so ominous. The extra, that extra footstep I heard after seeing Takano San off last night. With everything that happened on that insane night, I didn't mind something like that happening once. And surprisingly, this didn't happen at all in Watanadashi, I think. I can't exactly remember. The only, like, kind of supernatural, obviously. Except for the big questions was, um, that pounding noise that Tomotaki and, um, Shion heard when they were investigating the storehouse, which has a name. I was informed, but I do not have it on the top of my tongue right now. Though I will correct myself once. If you ever get introduced to that place again, I will make myself learn it. But if that was only a one-time thing, then it's... It, I don't mind too much. <laughs> With everything hap that happened on that insane night, I didn't mind something like that happening once. It had been a hell of a night after all. In fact, having just one hallucination was pretty fortunate. But those footsteps should have ended with yesterday, so if I heard them again today, there was really only one thing that it could have meant. Last night still wasn't over. It was still going. Still. That insane night. Forever. The step I heard. Just that one extra footstep was quietly, quietly ridiculing the nonsensical notion that the world starting today was completely different from the one that ended yesterday. My classmates playing in the schoolyard all vanished inside like the tide going out. When I approached the school, it felt like that warm, fuzzy scene had ended, and it didn't feel good. At the entrance, I took a quick look in everyone's shoeboxes to Toto Hojo. She was here, okay. That, um, that's a strike for my prediction that she wouldn't be here today because of the police. Mion was here too, and Rena, of course. Even Rita-chan was here. I mean, she's usually here. Tomita Kun and Okamura Kun were here. In fact, I didn't see any missing classmates. If there were shoes missing, they would have been my own. I took off my shoes and stuffed them in, then took out some slippers. There wasn't a single pair left in the shoeboxes anymore. And with that, they returned to their rightful state. But as I but as I stepped onto the wooden floor, I noticed there was just one pair of slippers left. Huh? Who's? Satoshi. Satoshi, who had never been to school since, disappeared last year. Until now, we had committed the exact same act of violence, but I guess in the very end, it went differently. You couldn't make it to school, but here I am. I didn't repeat the same mistake you made. I wasn't about to let myself feel superior about that. In fact, I felt an odd sense of familiarity with him, and we did get a little peak of his voice when he was reaffirming himself for the kill and he's like are you ready Satoshi then he's like uh-huh or something a misfortunate bond with someone I had never met due to following the same fate I headed down the hallway towards the usual classroom it felt like it had been the whole year since coming here what is this sudden noise? <laughs> kind of caught me off guard. Hey, did you forget Keiji Maibra? Satoshi Hojo didn't really disappear in the night of the Watanadashi, did he? <coughs> Satoshi Hojo disappeared a few days later. I mean, I guess that's been true. Wait, no. I was gonna say that's been true, but not really. In most cases, it did happen on the night. Except for Satoshi, I guess. <laughs> on Satoshi's birthday, if I was right, I didn't know what day it was. 
but I couldn't say for sure. I'd avoided Satoshi's failure unless I were made here past that day. I was still living in that night of insanity. The teacher still had to come to the classroom. The other door clattered open, the one teacher wouldn't use, so everyone turned at once to see who had arrived. Everyone looked pretty vacant. Hmm. Suppose I'll greet them. <laughs> Silence. When I started to think I'd fallen fat, someone started finally laughing for me. They're probably bummed out about the murders. Not Tepe's, obviously, but uh, at least Tomotachi's murder. I mean, if it was written the same way, then at least Mion would know about Takano's murder. And probably Rika. Rika knows everything also. I don't know if that's a slight diss because we didn't even show up at the festival. Hearing Mian and Rena's cheerful voice made me realize how dumb those dark feelings I'd been having at the entrance really were. Oi, oi, matsuri kibun te. Somosomo ore. At the festival at all, remember? Before I could say that, Rika Chen smiled at me. Keichiwa. ちゃんと僕の演武見ててくれましたですかうんちゃんと見てたよあんなにいっぱい拍手してくれてたのにリコちゃん気づかなかったのかなはケイちゃんにシオンのやつがちょっかい出してきたのを無視してね What do I continue? This feels like shit's about to go down. Let's let's go for a bit. I mean, I started laughing at the memory as she sassed me a few times on the back. Let's review that for a, a little bit. So I was trying to say that before it continued that they were just covering for a uh, Keichi because they know that he probably killed someone. <laughs> um, but it's a little more eerie than that. It's almost like they're exactly um, making direct references to um, the last two arts. Which would go well with my... Uh, did I have a name for it? I guess my soft reset theory, where I said instead of like hard resets like Uminato, where time just restarted again, um, time would actually continue on somehow. I couldn't really think of a reason of how that would work. It actually kind of got it boosted recently because there's rain during the Watanagashi festival, which didn't happen in the in the last two arts, which would support it, right? Saying that it's not actually the same. Because obviously people can have different um, actions, but nature itself shouldn't change, right? Okay, let's go for like ten, 10 minutes, maybe. So, that's the first time I've been in the world. Tomita Kun was facing me and talking. There's nobody behind me. That meant he was talking to me. Was that the ball throwing game? It was from a uh, under Tofu she, right? Yeah, that was under Tofu she. <laughs> okay, is this confirming my soft theory? That's kind of cool. リカちゃんも実質ビリみたいなもんだったじゃない。あそこで騎士改正の大技でガムをゲットとは。さすがは我が部の部員。この件 
and at a time like that is a feat only Furude would be would be allowed to do. Said Otomura Kun, breathing heavily from his nose. I mean these two weren't even there during that time, I think. They weren't even sprited in Onotakushi. In my direction, everyone laughed. If anyone but Rita-chan had done it, it would have been against the rules. Rita-chan gave me one of her Nipa smiles as she listened to it. In my direction. Rana turned to me. No, no, turned towards me. And then with a somewhat embarrassed smile, she whispered to me so only I could hear. But, really, thank you, Oh, for the keychain, I think it was. Oh no, because he won the giant stuffed animal. The class laughed at that cheering and jeering. This whole time, the conversation had been a little off. I wasn't quite getting it. Rena seemed to be taken aback, but when she answered, she did it with a smile. それで圭一君鉄砲を何丁もあらかじめ用意してすばやく撃ってみせてくれたんだよねかっこよかったうわ <笑> And this is in reference to Watanagashi's word games. Tokuzawa,お祭りの実行委員会の模擬店部長さんなのです。Maibor-san is great at making things sound good, isn't he? Yep, whenever he talks about something, it seems a lot better than it actually is. Ahahaha, <laughs> you can't say that. あははは。ケイチ君ってウリコさんの才能があるんだね。きっとバナナの叩き売りとかやったら上手だと思うよ。さっきから何の話だよ。だいたい俺。ドンドシュでファストファンドファーストプレイス。アスワロドゥズウォ
so maybe it's not a giant point into that direction. You know what? Let's leave it. 45 minutes. It's 1.48 a.m. I think I'm done for now. I'm, I'm leaving you on a cliffhanger. I'm excited too, but I need to shave and go to bed. <laughs> so we will continue this soon. I will again try to record more, especially since this is getting really interesting. So hopefully you will see bitter influx in Higurashi thing. I'll try to get at least two a week if possible. Or more. Because obviously we're getting maybe close to the finale. It feels like it. I, I definitely got the vibes from like the Onutakushi uh, finale from this for some reason. Then it kind of switched. But we'll talk about it later. Thanks for watching and have a nice day. See ya.